Making only his fourth Major League start, Miles Michaelis led the Texas Rangers to victory over the first meeting of the season against the New York Yankees. Both the Rangers and Yankees have been trying to shore up their injury-depleted starting rotations for much of the season. Michaelis threw 105 pitches and only allowed four hits before leaving the mound halfway through the eighth inning. The right-hander came into Monday night's game with a winless record and an ERA over 10. He needed to be better than he has been to this point if he planned to beat Shane Green, who was 2-0 with a 1.232 ERA, and he did just that. Green committed three errors and had four runs hit off him, only making it through three through five and two-thirds innings. The Rangers take away game one of the four-game series with a 4-2 victory over the Yankees. Well, switching gears now to college football, the Big 12 Media Days kicked off day one in Dallas and proved to be a strong showing for a couple Texas powerhouses. Despite a hot start and crumbling midseason, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech changed the ending outcome of their season. And one of the biggest upsets of the bowl season and the first go at head coaching for Cliff Kingsbury, Tech knocked off Arizona State in the National University Holiday Bowl. Here's what Coach Kingsbury had to say going into the upcoming season. It is. I think year two for our entire staff, our entire program, um, there's a comfort level. And, and having a guy who's an established leader, an established player at quarterback position in our system really helps and has helped the entire offseason. So we're excited about him. We're excited about our team. And we'll see how it shakes out. And the question in the air for the defending Big 12 champions, the Baylor Bears, is do they have the same staying power to repeat? With experience in quarterback Bryce Petty leading the Bears, Baylor is sure to make an impact. Petty turned heads last season with his precision and poise and continues to turn heads this summer as an Elite 11 camp counselor with his physical and mental toughness. The college football season is now only 39 days away from kicking off the 2014 season. We'll have more in sports at 10. News Channel 10 at noon. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Angie Wynn. If you're making lunch plans, we've got the perfect spot. Head downtown for high noon on the square. It's just getting started and the weather couldn't be better for eating outside. News Channel 10's Stephanie Fredrickson is live in downtown Amarillo to show us what's happening at the final high noon on the square of the summer. Hey, Stephanie. Angie, this is it. We've made it to this week's final week of High Noon on the Square. Lunch is just now being served, and as you can see behind me, there are already hundreds of people lined up, ready for an afternoon of fun. Joe Taco is providing the fajita lunch, and there's still plenty of time to get down here. And joining me now is the brains behind this all, Executive Director of Center City, Beth Duke. And Beth, just explain to us how truly important this whole event is for Amarillo. Oh, this is amazing. This caps off our 20th season. We've averaged 700 people every week for nine concerts. And think how many people we've brought downtown to see everything new that's going on. And maybe they'll come back and enjoy our restaurants and enjoy the historical preservation that Center City is so proud of. And although this is the final high noon, summer isn't quite over yet. What else do people have to look forward to in the upcoming month with Center City? You know, the next few weeks, we're working on Center City Block Party. It is Saturday night, August 16th, and we're going to rock downtown from 4 to midnight with bands like this Mediums and 21 other live bands. You don't want to miss it. Sounds great. There's still plenty of time to get down here. This is the final week of high noon for the summer. Joe Taco is providing fajitas, and there's still plenty of time to come down and enjoy entertainment. $7 will provide you with food and entertainment, and it all goes to a great cause benefiting the city and the Center City Project. Reporting live in downtown Amarillo, Stephanie Fredrickson, News Channel. Allie, Angie, the NFL's new policy on domestic violence will force players and staff to face a six-week suspension without pay for the first offense and a lifetime ban for a second offense. League Commissioner Roger Goodell admitted he, quote, didn't get it right when the NFL only suspended Baltimore Ravens running back Ray Rice for only two games over an incident of domestic violence, but hopes these changes will make a difference. Domestic violence advocates hope the NFL's new policy sends a message that goes beyond professional football. As experts say, about 1.3 million women are sexually assaulted by an intimate partner every year. But despite the league's new tougher stance, players given a lifetime ban are eligible for a reinstatement just after one year. The NFL says even if a player ap applies to be reinstated, there is no guarantee their request will be granted. Players could even face more severe punishment from the league depending on the circumstances of, this, of the dispute. Reporting live in the studio, Stephanie Fredrickson, News Channel 10. Alley information released this morning states the truck driver who crashed into the McDonald's on Emerald Boulevard on April 8th was under the influence of alcohol. 
According to the Amarillo Police Department, the 47th District Attorney's Office has accepted a case of intoxicated assault against 30-year-old Daniel Bryan of Canyon. Bryan turned himself into the Potter County Correction Center last night. Bryan has since bonded out of jail. News Channel 10 will continue to dig into the facts of this case and bring you more information coming up on Live at 5 and the News at 6. The only focus of the afternoon was fun for San Yu and his family as he took part in a day dedicated to celebrating life at Wonderland with free access to the entire theme park. A chance to not wait in line and have private and exclusive access to an amusement park is something most kids only dream of, but it was a reality for 60 children battling cancer along with their families. Thanks to the generosity of Outdoor Adventures, Panhandle Angels, and Texas Tech Health Service Center, all in attendance were treated to a barbecue and free reign of the entire park. Well, this is a good time for us to get out with the kids and get out with the families. Well, it's fantastic, number one, because these kids are doing so well. It's, it's wonderful to see. We've had this last year, we've had uh, about at least 13 new diagnoses just from last summer to this summer. And so, of course, it does our hearts really good to see them out here smiling and playing and having a good time with their parents and seeing their parents smiling and happy. For San Yu, this day truly was a celebration and could not have come at a better time. It's kind of relaxing because uh, I've been in uh, the hospital a lot, also doing like chemo and surgeries. So it's been pretty rough. How are you feeling today, a year later? I, I'm feeling pretty good. And many families and children like San got a day away from hospital visits to enjoy Wonderland. The real goal is just a celebration of uh, having the successes against cancer. Children here are undergoing treatment now. So to get a break from all the prodding and procedures and chemotherapy and give them a normal day that uh, most kids kind of take for granted. All these groups and their volunteers help put on several other events for these kids and their families throughout the year. Anything to make life easier as they go through such trying times in their lives. Reporting in the News Center, Stephanie Fredrickson, News Channel 10. A wildfire that has forced the evacuations of Navajo communities in northwestern New Mexico has grown to more than 17 square miles and has already burned more than 10,000 acres. Fire officials say the fire is being fueled by fierce winds and the gusts have hampered any effort to attack the flames directly. And as of 4 o'clock this morning, zero containment was still being reported by New Mexico officials. A fire spokeswoman also says officials are most concerned about keeping the public out of harm's way given the unstable nature of the fire. Now, Stephanie, despite all the land that's been burned, are there any major damages or any injuries reported? Luckily, this is the best news. Fire officials say so far no one has been hurt and no homes or okay. businesses have been destroyed. More than 800 firefighters are now on scene to help fight the fire. So I'll keep you guys updated and hopefully wow. we get some of this contained soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's a lot of fire. Good morning. Football season, it's finally here. And with the new season comes more effort to prevent concussions and other football-related injuries for young players. Some school districts already require baseline concussion testing before students take the field. And now more independent youth leagues are starting to adopt those same screening standards. Trainers are encouraging young athletes to take the test, saying a baseline is a great tool if you can get it. It's easy to do and does not take very long. The screening test established a record of a child's healthy brain at the time of the test and serves as a basis for comparison should they suffer concussion in the future. And doctors say going without help after an injury can be very dangerous. So tests like these can at least get the help started and keep them on the field and on their feet. Reporting live in the studio, Stephanie Fredrickson, News Channel 10. It's been 75 years since the Baseball Hall of Fame opened its doors. Fans packed the plaque room in Cooperstown, New York Thursday night to get a glimpse of some of baseball's royalty. And this event is just part of a year-long celebration. The major finale of the event happens on July 27th when Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, Frank Thomas, Joe Torr, Tony Larusa, and Bobby Cox are all inducted into the Hall of Fame. And it was a historic evening for the Vanderbilt baseball program as they achieved a first in school history by taking home the 2014 College World Series national title. Vanderbilt wins 3-2 over Virginia. This was also Vanderbilt's first national title in a men's team sport. The game was a defensive and pitching battle, but Vanderbilt reclaimed the lead in the eighth inning with a solo home run. The first home run for Vandy since May 16th and the first for the team in this year's tournament. Vandy's Dansby Swanson was also named tournament MVP. 
A New Mexico teen is defying the odds and showing her competitors on the basketball court she's a force to be reckoned with. This all comes as a result of being born with only two fingers on her left hand. This past season, the ninth grader was also the top scorer on her middle school team. The teen says plenty of people have tried to discourage her from playing, but it only makes her play harder. Well, former NBA All-Star Tracy McGrady is hanging up his cleats and retiring from playing independent baseball. After participating in the Independent Atlantic League Home Run Derby and All-Star Game in Sugarland, Texas, McGrady announced his retirement from baseball. McGrady did not hit any home runs in seven innings at the Derby. In the All-Star Game itself, McGrady pitched one and a half innings, allowing one run and recording his first professional strikeout in the second inning. And at 105 years old, a California woman will become the oldest person to toss a ceremonial first pitch at a Padres game when she takes the field Sunday. In honor of her big birthday, Agnes McKee was chosen to throw the first pitch at the Padres game on July 20th. McKee is considered one of the oldest residents of San Diego County. She says she has been studying up the names of the Padres players for her big moment on Sunday, admitting she does not usually follow the team because, quote, the Padres never win. Well, it looked more like a scene out of Fight Club than a football scrimmage for two NFL teams. The Dallas Cowboys and Oakland Raiders had a joint practice on Tuesday, but the action got out of hand towards the end of the session. The two sides got into a huge fight during one of the drills, and many players rushed to defend their teammates. The Cowboys host the Ravens on Saturday for their second game of preseason play. And Aggie games will no longer be dry for fans. Concessions at the Pan American Center begin including alcoholic beverages this month, beginning with last week's New Mexico State University Volleyball Tournament. NMSU officials recently announced that a liquor license was granted for the arena following years of debate. Alcohol has mostly been sold exclusively at concerts and, on, and shows at the on-campus venue since 2002. School officials say they believe the change will be an improvement for the fan experience, but critics say the sales could mean more intoxicated fans at games. And one Texas Rangers fan got a little more out of the game than he bargained for. During the Mariners-Rangers game Sunday night, Seattle Mariners catcher Umberto Quintero caught a foul ball while sitting in the dugout and tossed it to a fan sitting behind the dugout. But watch right here, the fan wasn't ready as the ball knocked over the fan's cup of beer and spilled it all over the fan. The Rangers won the final game of the series 1-0. Well, now it's time for a look at your forecast. For that, let's send it over to Storm Track Center where meteorologist Alan Gwen has a look at today's weather. Alan, it was a crazy Friday with that rain. Are we going to see some of that coming into today? Potter County deputies need you to avoid Northeast 24th and Lakeside. That's Loop 335 due to an escaped inmate out of the Neal unit. News Channel 10 Stephanie Fredrickson is live and uh, live on scene in Northeast Amarillo. Stephanie, what's the latest? We are still on high alert this morning as an escaped murder has escaped the jail this morning. Around 3.40 this morning, Marvin Garcia escaped from the Neal unit after scaling a wall. Now several shots were fired and it's unclear if any of them affected Garcia. Now I just checked in again with officials and they say so far no change. Search efforts are still in place. Several different local departments have been deployed to help in the search, along with the dog units who have been given Garcia's scent to help try and track down the convicted killer out of California. Now, we also need you to be aware we have checked in with Folsom Acres and the Crawford Edition, and they are not running buses today. Also, Highland Park schools have been aware of the situation, and they are on high alert, but school is in session there. You can check their Facebook page for all the latest updates to where they stand on all the situation. And right now, again, local departments are still in the hunt for the convicted killer out of California. Garcia was convicted back in 2008 after uh, murder, char murder charges. And it is still unclear exactly how the escape happened. We just know he scaled a wall, several shots were fired, and now several departments are in the search for him. You are urged to avoid this area as it is on lockdown. We are in the northeast 24th area near Loop 335. You need to avoid this area as it is on lockdown. Now, if you have any information or see Garcia, you are asked to call officials immediately. They say this is an urgent, urgent matter and they made this a high mission. We'll keep, continue to keep you updated. Right now, again, convicted murderer on the loose. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio, and we'll bring you more information when it becomes available. NFL backlash just keeps growing as Target announced that it's pulling all Adrian Peterson merchandise off the shelves as the investigation continues. The company says, quote, based on feedback from its customers and the team's decision to keep him out of the Vikings' activities, it's removing all Peterson gear from its stores and the website. Peterson is accused of child abuse after allegedly punishing his young son with a switch. He has maintained, though, that he did not mean to hurt his son. 
And as promised, a national women's organization made sure to keep their message seen at Thursday night's matchup. A, good, a, a Goodell Must Go banner was flown over Phillips Arena, Atlanta, during the Buccaneers-Falcons Thursday night football game. The National Women's Advocacy Organization, known as Ultraviolet, says they will keep flying that banner at every NFL game they can to get they can get to until NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell is fired or resigns. Now, despite all the negative attention facing the NFL, one NFL star is topping headlines on a positive note. During Thursday night's game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Atlanta Falcons wide receiver Devin Hester set an NFL all-time record with his 20th touchdown return of his career. In the second quarter of play, Hester returned a 62-yard punt for a touchdown, breaking a tie with former Falcon Deion Sanders. Hester's return put the Falcons up 35-0. And switching gears now, it was an emotional night in baseball as Derek Jeter took his last at-bat at Yankee Stadium, but the baseball great ended his final game at home in historic fashion. Jeter brought in the winning run in his final regular season game at home. Jeter says his last game at Yankee Stadium was also his last game playing shortstop. He says, out of respect for the Red Sox and their fans, he will play in Boston this weekend, but as the Yankees close out their season, he says he will likely do it as the designated hitter. Well, switching gears now to a different search that's happening in Texas. This one, the hunt for the new Texas Rangers manager. The Rangers have interviewed internal candidates Mike Maddox and Steve Buccelli in their search. Maddox is the club's pitching coach, while Buccelli is a former Rangers third baseman and was the manager at AAA Red Round Rock this season. Texas General Manager John Daniels said when the season ended Sunday that he had some external candidates in mind, but would be watching to see if any other big league managers became available. And sticking with Major League Baseball, Kansas City Royals fans finally have something to celebrate. The Royals hosted the Oakland A's last night for the American League Wild Card Game in attempts to reach postseason play for the first time since 1985. And after five hours, going into 12 innings of play, Salvador Perez sealed the Royals' comeback and punched their ticket into the postseason with the game-winning hit. The Royals win 9-8 and head into postseason for the first time in 29 years. They move on to face the Los Angeles Angels.